SpaceX currently is a private company, and like all private companies, they need lots of sources of funding and capital, and SpaceX is pursuing a lot right now. They've got the Starlink program, and they're rapidly developing Starship to make spaceflight more affordable, and if they want to achieve their goal of making life multi-planetary and also having a self-sustaining colony on Mars, it's going to take a whole lot of money. Even if Starship reaches its $2 million a launch target, they are still going to need to raise tons and tons of money to be able to send hundreds if not thousands of starships to Mars and back and actually create a self-sustaining colony and to reach those high levels of revenue they have lots of things planned and one of them of course is earth to earth transport so using the starship to transport people is a huge disruptor to the airline industry and can potentially make a whole lot more money than the internet service provider industry so Starlink is going to be a game changer and especially helpful for bringing internet to those who need it most but at maximum can only make a few billion dollars a year which is great but they're gonna need a lot more than that to be able to mass produce starships and send them to space and back and Mars and back and when you send people on long distance voyages like the ones that would go to Mars you're gonna have to store a whole lot of food and you're gonna have to recycle a lot of energy and a lot of waste and it overall just ends up becoming more and more complicated because the further your ship is from Earth the more distant communication becomes and even once you land on Mars Earth and Mars are going to grow in distance from each other over the course of two years until they line up again and during those two years you are not going to be able to have instantaneous communication ironically even though it's going to be an amazing feat of technology we're going to be going back to the dark days of having to wait for long periods of time to actually communicate with people because sending a message and receiving it on Earth is going to take 10 to 15 minutes for them to just hear it and then they formulate their response and then another 10 to 15 minutes to send that message back and of course the time it takes to send these messages is going to depend on Earth and Mars's location in the solar system and because Mars does not have its own on-ground servers to relay the internet for like we have here on Earth that means people who choose to go to Mars are not going to be able to have phone calls with their loved ones back home and they're also not going to have easy access to the World Wide Web like we do on Earth so entertainment and downtime is going to be restricted to whatever you can download to local drives that you take with you to Mars and I feel like if these trips are going to be years at a time people could quickly run out of content and I know Elon Musk has talked about with making life multi-planetary selling tickets so that people could move to Mars someday if they want to for just a mere half million dollars but I think that being so separated from the rest of mankind and the fact that on Mars at least initially you're going to be restricted to living in pretty small areas and anytime you want to go outside you're basically going to have to put on a bunch of scuba gear and you know you're not going to have pools you're not even going to have grass that you can walk around in so cabin fever may be a huge issue with those types of trips being on board a starship for months at a time with zero gravity and it's not going to be like a flight where if there's a noisy baby or an annoying guy chit-chatting next to you you can just wait for the flight to be over or maybe try to switch seats with someone else no you are going to be stuck with them for years at a time which is why I don't know for sure but I think there might be a little bit of a demand issue for how many people are willing to drop half a million dollars and move to Mars. Regardless, SpaceX is going to need more ways of generating capital, and part of the reason I feel like the Earth-to-Earth -Earth transport system will be groundbreaking and will be incredible for people to hop on board a starship and fly from London to Sydney within under an hour. That's going to be great, but if it's anything like the starship prototyping launches we're witnessing right now, or even like the very reliable Falcon 9 launch, as we're witnessing weather can play an important role on whether or not a rocket launch takes place and if you get everybody ready and you move everybody out to a starship launch pad get everybody on board the ship and then they decide you know what the weather's not good enough where we plan on landing or we're experiencing some technical malfunctions so we're actually going to have to delay this flight it may not be as simple as just a one-hour flight and then it suddenly becomes all about the work it takes to actually get to the spaceport and that can be time consuming and also they can lose a lot of money if unpredictable weather is canceling flights like that. So my proposal in this video that I haven't seen many people talk about is the potential of commercializing moon missions. And there's a lot of benefits of making the moon kind of a tourist location people can stop by on for a while. And there are advantages that you may not have with the idea of making a self-sustaining colony on Mars. And the moon probably is never going to be perfectly adequate for long-term human survival. You know, it's not really going to be 
super easy to have a colony of people always there and just kind of permanently living on the moon but for the sense of raising capital and making money for the business I think that it has a lot better chance of average everyday people who happen to have tons of money that are willing to spend money on SpaceX missions for their own personal entertainment and enjoyment so why is that well the moon is luckily not too far away which means that it only takes a few seconds for messages to be sent to people on the moon and back which means that theoretically you could technically have regular in real time video calls from the moon there might be a little bit of delay but it is possible I mean we even broadcasted the moon landing like decades ago so with a more established base which I'm hoping we can see with the Artemis project I think you could very easily have instantaneous communication and theoretically even internet access you could stream movies to the moon if you wanted to which would make it a lot more tempting to tourists or people who wanted to stay there kind of like it's a super fancy resort and of course the gravity is much lower on the moon even lower than that of Mars and if we were to start setting up larger facilities as Starship makes trips outside of Earth's orbit and of course trips to the moon much more affordable and obtainable they could start setting up facilities that you know recycle air so that the buildings on the moon wouldn't have to use an incredible amount of energy and have also have your own local energy storage for when it's that time of the month and the moon is not as sunny as it normally is but you could have lots of solar panels harnessing energy that could be used to recycle that air that way you can actually have not just like tiny cramped cabins on the moon but also you know somewhat roomy storage places and areas where people can play around try to play basketball on low gravity and that kind of thing and who knows what kind of sports could you come up with if you weighed a fraction of what you weigh on earth and if you had larger facilities for people to walk around and interact in then you wouldn't have to worry so much about wearing a spacesuit all the time and the other great benefit of the moon is it's definitely not that far away only taking probably a few days for people to get there from a starship launch and because the moon is very reliable with its orbit around the earth you can basically head back in a reasonable amount of time so if people were willing to spend big money so I'm not saying this would be super affordable it would definitely be a tourist vacation for the more rich demographics but probably for prices like Elon Musk is talking about a couple hundred thousand dollars you and your significant other or you and your friends could take a trip to the moon be there for a couple of weeks and then come back and you wouldn't experience much bone density loss of being in zero gravity for a few days whereas on a trip to Mars being in zero gravity for several months you would have to be careful and cautious about how your body would react to gravity once again and if you're not a trained astronaut you may run into some issues once you eventually come back to Earth whereas on the moon the trips could be short enough that I don't think it would impact you too greatly of course it would be a little bit weird at first but no damage that was too permanent in the first place which I think making trips that are only a couple of weeks to a month long would make the SpaceX trip a lot more approachable and obtainable to a wider demographic of people if they just knew hey I'm gonna be taking the next three weeks to four weeks off and I'm gonna go chill out on the moon play some games at a lunar based auditorium hang out with some people and of course through Starlink access maybe you would be able to stream content and still keep in touch with your loved ones and even have FaceTime calls from the surface of the moon whereas your trip to Mars wouldn't really be too doable there and I know the moon has very little atmosphere so there's not much hope here on turning the moon into a permanent self-sustaining colony like what Musk wants to do on Mars because Mars definitely has more of an atmosphere and the temperatures are a bit more reasonable still very cold but not as drastic as the temperatures on the surface of the moon and this would take several starship launches you know there would be several cargo supply runs there would be several manned supply runs where you're bringing customers and people who are paying to fly there but at the same time even if there's circumstances where there's bad weather I mean you can have a you know earth-based waiting room even if it's like a launch window you know people are like I'm going to go to the moon at some point in the next week right because the Falcon 9 launches and of course the Starship prototypes are very much not super strict on a schedule it's like okay sometime in the next few days weather permitting we're gonna make this launch and I don't know how well that's gonna work with earth to earth transport you know if you want to actually compete with the airline industry you're gonna have to be able to say okay we're leaving at this time at this this minute you're gonna get on the ship and we will get you there in 40 minutes and then you can get off whereas if the weather is still going to be a heavy impact on starship launches then this could throw out a lot of the perks of having earth to earth transport because if they say well we might leave you know 80 percent chance of us leaving at this time but if the weather doesn't look too good then we won't be able to leave at this time and we might not be able to take you to sydney in the next couple days if the rain gets much worse so if that ends up being the case there would probably still be a lot of people who would just opt for regular airlines because they would at least be a 
bit more reliable and a bit more consistent than rocket launches, which are very much up in the air a lot of the time right now. Hopefully in time the weather won't have an impact on Starship as much. But with the moon missions, knowing that it's more of a tourist vacation and you gotta book a few weeks to a month anyway, then just telling people that, hey, okay, the next lunar mission for tourists is gonna take place somewhere between February 1st and February 9th. Once the weather is good, we can launch at some point and have a certain number of tourists on board this ship. And while you're waiting, you can stay at a fairly nice resort we have near the spaceport and have museums or have theaters that people can hang out with while they're waiting for the weather to be permitting. But then when it is permitting, hopefully within that launch window, they can go to the moon, hang out there for a few weeks. You've got lunar styled hotel rooms. You've got the little gymnasium people can work out in and dump around and see what it's like to experience low gravity like that and stream movies, watch TV, talk to people back home and let them know, hey, I'm on the moon. How's things back on Earth? And sure, if it gets more developed in time, they could even stay there for a couple of months if they're able to make cargo supply runs to the moon somewhat regular and affordable, which I think Starship will make possible. And I think that there is a lot of potential revenue baked into that business model of kind of commercializing moon trips to the point that people can enjoy it for fun, but of course not have to be away from Earth for several years at a time, which is what trips to the Mars would entail. And I don't know, I feel like there's quite a bit of millionaires that could potentially want to pay SpaceX for long distance space flight like that, but the number of millionaires that are willing to be completely disconnected from Earth and having to wait 30 minutes to an hour to just send a couple of messages to people back on Earth, you can't have phone calls with anyone back on Earth, you can't have internet access from Mars, at least decent internet access, it would be very, very slow, and as Mars gets further away from Earth, it would just get slower, whereas the moon, fairly stable, fairly close by, you can keep in contact, you can stay there for a few weeks, you can stay there for a month, bit more flexible, and I think a lot more fun to the average everyday person, so I don't see it talked about too much, but I hope SpaceX considers something like that in the future, as Starship is proven more reliable and can make lots of routine flights, and I'm not saying the Earth-to-Earth -Earth transport thing can't work, I'm just saying there's some built-in inherent challenges that SpaceX is going to have to work really hard to overcome, but they're an incredible company and I have faith that they can do it, and I'm also curious of your guys' thoughts. What do you think of a commercial moon mission? Maybe if your Tesla stock does really, really well in the future, could you see yourself maybe one day taking a three to four week vacation to the moon? Because why not? And that's a thing that exists in the future. I definitely hope so. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.